All right, good evening. Welcome to okay. the Berwick Planning Board meeting. This is a regular meeting for Thursday, March 5th, 2020. If we could all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. So, oh, wow. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> All right, planning board members present tonight. We have Frank Underwood, we have Sean Winston, we have the vice chair, Nicole Fecko, and Mike LaRue absent tonight is our alternate, David Ross Lyons. We also have the town planner here, the town code enforcement officer, and members of the public. I'm moving on to the public comment session. <clears throat> it opens any resident property owner in the town of Berwick to come forward and talk about anything that relates to the planning board. We are having a public hearing this evening on one application uh, that is at 60 Route 236. So if you'd like to save your comments for then, uh, feel free. But uh, the public comment session is open. We'll have another public comment session at the end of the meeting or just before the end of the meeting. So public comment session is open. Feel free to come forward. <clears throat> All right. Down left, down in place. Uh, close the public, your phones. Please close, <laughs> I, I'll close the uh, public comment session. Moving on to the approval of the minutes for the February 20th, 2020 okay. meeting. <laughs> I like how James put in here. Dave Andreessen pointed out a typo. He didn't say what the typo was. No, <laughs> and at least he didn't have a typo when he, put, <laughs> he that, did that last time. Did that yeah. go around? <laughs> But I have no, uh, I, I mean, I didn't see anything. I didn't, I didn't see anything. Is there a I'm good. good. I wasn't here. I wasn't the motion here. would be for the we approval we of the minutes. You're going to have a public hearing. What was the date? Um, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, planning board meeting minutes for Thursday, February 20th, 2020. Okay. I'll second. Seconded. Further discussion? Challenge. All in favor? Decision. Uh, no's. Uh, abstaining? Don't. Okay. So that's three and two abstaining. Okay. Next is a public hearing, conditional use application, adult use marijuana <coughs> storefront, 60 Route 236, map R57, lot 55. It's in the RCI zone, and the applicant is Silver Therapeutics. So this is a chance for the public to come forward and talk about this application and this application only. If you have any concerns or any questions, I'll write those questions and concerns down. And then uh, once we move on to uh, discussing the application, we'll ask the applicant to address those concerns and, and those answer, those questions. So, public hearing is open. This is the public hearing for 60 Route 236, Silver Therapeutics. Anybody here tonight for this? Besides you guys? <laughs> okay, seeing nobody come forward for the public hearing, we'll close the public hearing. And next is Old Business, Conditional Use Application, Adult Use Marijuana Storefront, 60 Route 236, map R57, lot 55. It's in the RCI zone, and the applicant is Silver Therapeutics. I'll turn it over to Lee J, but you're free to come over. Great. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, board members. Uh, so the proposal is that uh, the project entails the redevelopment of 41,163 square foot lot, uh, commercial property, an existing business um, is currently there, Pitbull Automotive, LLC, uh, and they're proposing a marijuana uh, dispensary for Silva Therapeutics. The proposed improvements include redesign of the existing building for proposed business operations, redesign of the said building's entrance and driveway, formalizing parking, signage, and minor landscaping. The propo proposed facility's hours of operation will be from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., seven days a week. Advancing the proposed, faci uh, advancing the proposed facility um, design will require the conditional use permit, which is in front of you. The existing site is located on the northwest um, Northwest Berwick's six tenths of a mile, one, one point, point one six miles from the nearest intersection of Route 36 um, Berwick Road. Um, the site has been used as a mechanics garage um, previously. The garage itself is 1,467 square feet. The surrounding parcel space consists of gravel, um, driveway, three, um, three bay, uh, two bays extending north to the surrounding land. Um, use under the characterized as a rural uh, with a mixed commercial and industrial RCI zone. 
completeness. The applicant has provided a great deal of information. However, staff did feel at the last meeting, which I did not attend, um, that there was information missing and they have provided that information to the department, which would make this application complete um, at that point. Uh, and so the recommendation um, at this time would be for um, the board to be able to take the information in, which they did from the public hearing, which there was none, and you could make a determination on that application this evening. There are draft findings in front of you. We do know during the site visit we had earlier this evening that um, one abutter um, was at the site and had some concern with some of the drainage uh, coming off the site um, currently. Um, and impacting um, the property adjoining uh, this one. Okay. Start with Frank. Um, just a couple of questions. Um, the second floor that was shown in the, in the uh, supplement information, is that the floor that's there now on the set, or are you building an intermediate floor in there? Meaning, are you going to have that same floor to ceiling height? as high as it is for those we're, we're planning to keep it the same floor to heel ceilings okay so that's that's using that yeah. top floor as your yeah second. we will reconfigure the stairway though okay and then um i recognize the drainage issue out there too it's a pretty flat site so when i after the meeting i uh, the site walk i looked and the contour plan that we have, LA 200, shows some existing contours, but it really doesn't show anything that's proposed to try to shape that thing. And I think the abutter has a valid, has a valid concern about that sheet flow water that would be going off of that area. Um, you are going to be working on that area as in your combination of your, your pervious and your gravel areas. Um, I'd like to see a little more effort <coughs> into addressing that sheet flow drainage over there and possibly swaling it. We had a similar situation up at 71 Sullivan Street where we had a gravel lot. Your butter was c quite concerned about that water coming onto her property and they created some swales and some under drains in there to, to make sure they could capture it. So if your engineer could look at that. I, and again, you couldn't read the Topo on this on this sheet. Yeah, so. I mean, I'll, I'll start by saying that we're absolutely open to installing okay. some sort of berms. Um, I do, however, think that uh, the improvements that we're making to the site will help some of the, the existing conditions. The, uh, the gravel driveway that's there is really just impacted and impervious as it is. Uh, the proposed uh, pervious driveway, which you know we could talk about too, um, I think will help some of that infiltration. And I agree, it, w it, it will help it, but if we could have yeah, a little I mean, bit I more de would, definition. I think really even a very small berm would, would probably um, Right, so it, need to it would need to show on your plan, yeah. so it's something that we could. Yeah, I had thought about that as well after the <laughs> site walk. And in fact, um, I talked with the chairman earlier. Um, I think that certainly what you're suggesting along that just off the edge of the new parking area, creating a, um, a swale that comes down into a, a larger pond area just behind the light stanchion that's proposed um, in that area. I think that would probably be enough to, to handle the water coming off that side of the site. But there's plenty of relief to release it down right. into the ditch line along Route 230. Yeah, sure. and if they did it as an LID design with, um, with some median material inside, you wouldn't have to have any, any um, overflow um, you know, areas for the ponding. When it happens, it would just suck that water right down into the so into that, the site. So that LID, that would be additional yeah. credit towards that effort. Exactly. And then the only other question I had out there was whether they were registered with the state of Maine to do business, and all that is all that is up and up. Mm -hmm. Sean, I, I think my <coughs> can I just make uh, one oh, point on, on the uh, the registration? Just is, to be clear, the applicant is Silver Therapeutics of Berwick LLC. I, I know we're listed as Silver Therapeutics Inc., which is Silver Therapeutics Inc. is a Massachusetts corporation, but the applicant, Silver Therapeutics of Berwick LLC, is a main corporation. And you're so you're yeah. registered and you have a designated yeah. agent and all of that as yeah, part of the Yeah, it's one of the record to make okay. sure that the applicant is. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah. I think uh, my comment, similar to Frank's, I know the original, and we talked about this at the site, there was discussion of permeable pavement. Right. And like I said, out there, when we were talking about it, my experience with that has not been very good from what I've seen. <laughs> um, it tends to fail. It gets maintained for a little while and then everybody forgets about it. Right. 
Um, so I would almost lean more towards more of a standard pavement with a drainage and a detention pond at that, you know, that corner, I guess, towards over where the well is. Yeah, I have no objection to that. Yeah. Um, if, if that's where the board feels, we can uh, make that. I think that's just more yeah. and more sustainable for you guys. Yeah. You won't have to worry about getting somebody in to vacuum the pavement. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, um, you know, we propose the impervious or the pervious pavement yep. as, you know, some green infrastructure. If we can achieve the same goal with the swale and then 100% address the neighbor's concern, which are legitimate, um, I think we can kill two birds with one stone. And if you and if you do look at that product that, that E.J. Prescott puts out there, it's a it's a, a, a cell containment uh -huh. system, and I think they call it a geopavement. It's actually a stone-filled uh, plastic uh, structure. But, but you were talking about doing actually more of a traditional. Yeah, I yeah, I would I would think if we do a, a berm and drainage with a, a small detention pond, yeah, that I think then you could go with a standard yeah. asphalt. Okay, right in that area. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Nicole? Uh, the only thing that I had was I know that you added a fence to one side, to the left side of the property, if you're looking directly uh -huh. at it. And then you mentioned that you're going to do the same thing on the right-hand side. Is right. Well, accurate? there is a fence there, but there is a fence we want there, to, we're, we're we'll gonna, extend it. You're going to make it taller yeah. or put your fence there. Um, since you're going to have to make these changes to that anyway, I'd just throw that onto the plan as well. Okay. Anything else? Mike? Mike? <clears throat> so I, I agree with uh, Frank and Sean. We were looking at that area, and I think that, you know, I think that traditional, you know, pond or whatever um, retention area would be the best bet to address everything. And I, I just like to see on a plan before we move forward in approving the application to see what your engineer comes up with. Okay. The, the only other thing I noticed here is it, it talks about these two storage cabinets on the back when you look at the site plan. I didn't see them there. I didn't see them there either. So it look, well, because it says to be moved or something. Relocated. Right? They've, they've been, been moved. Moved. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there will today. so there'll be no outside storage. Oh no, th that was just an existing condition. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, I, that's the way that I feel. I don't know. That I'd like you know before we move forward on approving oh, yeah. the application. I think so. Yeah. so yeah. Um, I'm just looking at the calendar here. Uh, Next meeting is on the 19th of March. Would that be enough time for you and your engineer to work together? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then talk to James and get on the next agenda? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, is, is the public hearing closed? The public hearing is closed, okay. yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we'll be back uh, hopefully in a couple weeks. Okay. Yeah, just talk to James, get on the agenda, and um, we'll see you in a couple weeks, hopefully. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. No, the state's so backed up on this. Stuff. Yeah. You got plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to new business, conditional use application, <coughs> substantial expansion, 541 Portland Street map, R72, lot 7A. It's in the RCI zone, and the applicant is ReadyMix Corporation. Mr. Town Planner. Mr. Town Planner does not have a memo on this, as Mr. New Town Planner handled this um, for me. And um, I don't believe he, I think he provided some findings of fact that you have in your board. It was a simple, small addition to the side of the building. Um, and it's my understanding that um, prior that that use could have actually had a building permit issued without coming to the planning board several months ago. Um, so um, this one's in your hands. I apologize. Say I did again. not do the review. Um, it's my understanding from James that a building permit could have just easily been issued for this expansion on that site like several months ago without needing to come to the planning board. So this, they haven't constructed it. Yet. He, he cites a 500 square foot, he cites a 500 square foot expansion as a number that if it gets, if we exceed that, it, it requires a, it's considered a substantial expansion. So it did, it did require to actually come back here to the board. Well, again, I was not involved in this one and I, I'm just covering tonight, so. I have no clue what But there's what no was change done. in use or anything? No change in use or okay. anything like that. As we saw 
what, a year and a half, two years ago, we did the expansion mm -hmm. approval on the other side for the um, cleaning cleaning mm -hmm. um, area for the trucks. They are now looking for more office space on the other side of the building. I do know that. So I'm just, my only question would be on, it says incoming and outgoing parts. What are we talking for parts? So anything to like repair ready mix trucks or okay. haul trucks, equipment that we use. And that's already happening right now. We just want a more organized place to um, put it. Okay. To, you know, receive and ship out. Okay. So what are some of the actions that we can take tonight? Uh, <clears throat> well, I think this is the first time it's in front of you. So application. Um, you would need to find in the application complete. Um, and decide whether you want to either do a site walk or not, um, and then hold your public hearing. So the, your next step would be to, to um, determine if the application is complete, and then um, okay. decide whether or not you want a site walk and public hearing. I don't even have the application here. It starts out with the findings of fact. <coughs> yeah, I don't have that. No, I'll give you mine since I have nothing to do with this one. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get it. I didn't get it. I got it. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, James. I got the findings of fact. <coughs> There's a plan, I believe, in there as well. The black mark for James. I got it. Do you want to look at this plan? I've got the plan. I don't, ha I don't have the application. <laughs> you didn't have the application? Okay. I still don't have the application. Here, you can have mine. <clears throat> I think it's complete anyway. It's just one page. Yeah. yeah. It's just that. Yeah. I just wanted to see it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, how would the board like to proceed? Um, I propose that we find the application complete. Is that a motion? I move. Yes. <clears throat> okay, we have a motion that the application <laughs> for ready mix companies is complete. I'll second. <clears throat> second it. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Um, do we want a site walk? I mean, I, I know there's been a lot of activity out on that site. I've never been out there, but you don't have to, I can just go out on my own and take a look just to drive in, I believe. I mean, weren't there issues with dr detention ponds and building things out, or am I on the no, wrong side? No, that's the other one. That's the other that's side of the street. Yeah. The street. <laughs> then I don't need that's to go. That's industrial drive. <laughs> 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 that's a concrete plant. Yeah, that's another concrete plant. I don't need to go. <laughs> All right, no, do, we yeah. want, do we need a public hearing? I think we should have a public hearing. Probably. We should, right? right? You can certainly do that. I mean, it's your, it's your call. We do recognize you have um, <coughs> fairly heavy commercial uses on either side of them. There's no residential areas around there or anybody that would be negatively impacted. But There is a little residence right here, but I think it's owned by that guy, right? Didn't, wasn't there a mobile home in there? I don't, I don't think so. Yeah. yeah, I remember that because yeah. they had tenants or something in there. So, right. yeah, let's have a public hearing. March 19th. Is that pretty much the consensus? Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> so we'll look to do a public hearing on March 19th. That give, does that work for you? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. And then after that? After that, we could uh, vote the application, or we can vote the application, uh, we can approve the application yeah. and findings of fact okay. after that. Okay, that's so. And the findings of fact have been put together already. Yeah. already so James, yeah. James started those for James you. James yes. recapped it, so. Yeah. All right, thank you. So, yeah, uh, March 19th at 6.30. Sounds good, thank All you. All right, thank you. You can have that back. Oh, this is Lee J's, though. <coughs> oh, I'll hold on to that, then. Thanks. 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 <laughs> Next to new business is a sketch plan, subdivision amendment for, excuse me, 241 Cranberry Meadow Road, map R32, lot 15. It's in the R2 zone in the... Applica uh, the applicant is Hersom. I'll turn it over to the town planner. Uh, yes, um, you do not have a memo on this. Um, I have been handling this one, though. Um, basically, the applicant will do a, the presentation for you tonight, but it's, it's an amendment to a previously approved subdivision where there's going to be another lot split. Um, at this time, the only issue that I see, and I've had conversation with, um, with the designer, um, with Chris Mendy, 
um, was that the way the um, uh, setback is established with the new lot line in between the existing lot and the um, proposed lot uh, currently encroaches on the swimming pool, but they haven't done any on the ground field work for their survey yet. So um, I think they're waiting to find out where this is headed before they get that information going. So I'll let Chris handle the rest of the discussion on this. Welcome back. Good evening. <laughs> Chris Mendy, Civil Consultants. I'm here on behalf of the Hersoms. Um, so we've identified the lots on Cranberry Meadow Road. Um, it is, it was the, re there were um, two prior subdivisions in the neighborhood. Um, this was the, the uh, remaining portion of the uh, parent lot for the subdivisions. And um, the owners um, are now uh, desiring to um, split that. They, they weren't the owners at the time of the last two subdivisions. It's changed hands a number of times over the years. Um, so basically, the the, uh, the property is uh, partly wooded, partly um, old farmland with a house on it. Um, it has adequate area to support um, the division. Um, it has adequate road frontage. Um, I, I believe we can meet all the setback requirements. Uh, Lee J was referring to the swimming pool there. Um, the location I've shown on the plan is from aerial photographs, so it's um, kind of plus or minus five feet or so. So um, we may have to modify the uh, location of one of the lines slightly to meet the setback requirement required for that. Um, my, my primary interest in being here tonight, um, given that this is a sketch plan, um, is um, I, I believe this would be um, categorized as a major subdivision based on the, the prior divisions that have occurred on the property. Um, and um, my, my primary concerns are with regard to uh, what will be required for the application given kind of the minimal nature of the additional development here. Um, we have topography, two-foot topography on the site already. We have a boundary survey. Um, we have uh, medium intensity soils. I guess one question I would ask, are we going to be required to have high intensity soil survey uh, for this purpose? Um, we haven't done test pits for a septic system yet, but we will um, as, as necessary. Um, and that that's pretty much it, I guess. Just a little bit of guidance as far as what the what the planning board might like to see in the way of um, uh, the final or the uh, preliminary application storm water, whether that's going to be an issue, whether we're going to have to do a detailed study. Uh, I think I'd like to see test pits for septic on there. I mean, especially since it looks like there's such a limited building envelope um, based on the setbacks and the well, the setback from the well, and you're going to apparently, you know, have to put another well on there, so you're going to have setbacks from that well and septic. So um, I think my biggest concern, and, and it has nothing to do with this at all, but for the future, for your clients, is the well being on the, pro their well being on the property line will pose a problem if they go to sell the property with appraisal. And that's just something that I know from being a real estate agent. Um, a well within 10 feet of the property line will cause a problem with an appraisal. That's can, just if they ever go to sell. Can that be mitigated with an easement kind of an understanding? I don't know. I know you, they get pretty they get pretty particular about it. That's, have I, you ever I, run I, into that with a, a radius easement? Um, I, I mean, we, we've put wells on neighboring properties yeah. with easements and all sorts of... Yeah, I've I mean, seen that know. stuff before, and I've, I've been hung up on deals because of this, but that has nothing to do with this. I would like to see septic um, test pits out there, though. Just okay. make sure it's a viable lot. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not sure... <laughs> how to deal with that yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah we could, we could certainly put a maintenance <laughs> easement are you, got, are you the applicant no, I, no. <laughs> a, a clarification on that on government no, sponsored you, you got to come to the microphone but yeah. I, what, what is your dealing with this application I just have some information on the oh. setback uh, issue with the wells okay oh, it's as yeah, an okay. we'll, we'll take just yeah. an aside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, no, we have we aside. have viewers at home that need to hear <laughs> microphones and yeah. So, um, okay. yeah, we we can certainly do, um, you know uh, put a maintenance easement around it or something um, if we can't reconfigure the boundary line to to get a ten foot setback. Yeah. I can't remember again that well. I think is taken off an of aerial photograph. Yeah, at this point. yeah. So, yeah. so something the uh, accurate, location may not be mm -hmm. um, exact. It's a preliminary you know, sketch right plan at this point. Space. Um, 
Mike? Yeah. Sean? I don't have any, any questions on this one. Just a couple more, I think. Um, I was just curious, on the way the front uh, dimension is figured out, it's, f it's 142 and then you have another 17. Is that t typically how that frontage would be shown because the right-of-way jogs? That's correct. Um, I believe that the way I put that in there, though, is I think the lot width is actually, I think, is 150 feet required. Back at the setback line. And, and I actually have 150 feet of width there for the minimum lot width as well. Because I would think that that lot line would project straight to where it intersected the right of way, but the right of way is actually jogged. That's so now correct. You t it's like being on a corner lot. You get the frontage. <laughs> right. You get the yeah, frontage. Yeah, but I think um, if, if you were to measure straight across from front corner to front corner, I, I believe the way I've got that in there is 150 feet wide. So the, the, yeah. the frontage is actually yeah. more than 150 feet. I and think. I had the same comments on test pits and the, the well and this, that, and the other. But I'm just curious. We run into this all the time, and you always show the, uh, especially when we're not going to do a high intensity soil survey on this. I'm assuming we're, we're not going to do that, but maybe we are. Um, where you actually show well-drained and moderately well-drained. I'm offering, I'm asking this only because you guys prepare these plans. Is it worthwhile to actually showing what that limitation is, the limiting condition for a poorly drained, for example, high water table or, you know what I mean? When you go into the soils maps, they usually right. define what that limitation is if it's a, if it's a restriction on whether it's, I'm not following you exactly. So the, the soils classification system <coughs> with regard to well-drained, moderately well-drained, yeah. and, and so forth, has to do with depth to water table. Okay. Yeah. But in all cases? I I'm not a soil scientist. And I'm not either. Yeah. That's why but I'm I asking. But I believe that's correct. Okay. It, it, that's just the point of topic I'd like to maybe talk about at some point in time. Sure. Because it would help us, obviously, if we knew what the limiting condition was. Seasonal high water, ledge, you know, mm -hmm. kind of thing. So... And I think that that was all I had. Okay, one one more question. On one of the prior subdivision approvals, there was um, a waiver granted uh, so that the wells could be within 50 feet of um, the property line, the front property line, as opposed to the requirement. I think the current requirement is for 100 feet. Given that this is part of, uh, you know, this is a revision to a prior approval, um, could we ask about the same subdivision? That was a, that was in the subdivision when it was originally approved. Yeah, that was a condition of approval on the, on the recorded plan. Well, if yeah. you look at this, I mean, the well is set back. The well <coughs> existing well is set back fifty foot from the front yard. It says it right on the plan. But it doesn't mean that that's r that should that it should be that way. No, Chris, it doesn't mean that. Yeah. But I think your question was: Was that a waiver to yes, get it to put there? Yes. If you look at there. note seven on the plan, um, this the waivers uh, that were granted. As part of one of the so subdivisions, well one shall of be them is a reduction of the well setback from 100 to 50 feet. Management plan. Uh, I'm, I'm not certain that we need that, but I'm wondering if that, if, if you folks would uh, be agreeable to carrying that over. I'd have to look at the notes over. from that approval and figure out why that was, is that something why that could, it was asked for <laughs> and why it was granted. Lee J, is that something that could be waived? May not be I, can the, I can look at the minutes. <laughs> um, is that something that can be waived? Yes, that could be waived. What can't be waived um, in subdivisions is lot width, lot depth, um, lot size, because that's all controlled by zoning, mm -hmm. and anything you'd want to do with that would be a, a variance from the ZBA. But in the case of a performance standard, like a well location or a road width or any of those types of standards, those could be waived. I'm somewhat intrigued by this. I wasn't around when that was done, so I'm kind of curious about, about that, but... Maybe we can find some information out. What is the purpose for having a 100-foot setback? Well, of course, there's a 100-foot setback from wells to septic systems. But that I understand. And I'm not sure, um, without going in depth into the zoning ordinance, as to whether or not there's anything, and I can do a quick, quick look, but to see if there's anything in here that your local standards say must have a 100-foot setback from the road. I've never heard of that, but... They, they do have it in the ordinance. They, they do, Chris. Yeah, and my, my guess is it's probably something relating, you know, the, the thought behind it probably has to do with salt contamination. Right. Yeah. But, you know, they don't give an explanation as to why right, the right. requirements... I'm just wondering, the I've, I've 
It's just an odd thing. But where yeah. these lots are so small, they're, they're, they're big lots, but they're narrow. Yeah. Should we be requiring all wells and septics to show that we do have the 100 foot and this, That's that, That's why and I would like to see a So not just the building envelope, but yeah. kind of, you're going to have to propose kind of where the window is for right. each no, one of okay. these. And that's why I'm asking about okay. the 50 yeah. foot in case, okay. be, yeah. in case that, that becomes okay. an issue. The yeah. Yeah. And then if this was a major subdivision before, does this become an amendment to a major subdivision or is, or are we just... In my life and all the other towns I work with, yes, it would be an amendment. It's not a new it's major a new subdivision. Amendment. It's an amendment to an existing subdivision. Okay. And that amendment, of course, would, when it's recorded in the registry, would be tied back to the original the approval. Original. So, Okay. Yeah. I mean, this technically, if, if Chris is able to provide everything and you're satisfied, technically this could be a one meeting deal rather than a sketch preliminary final. It could be sketch and final. So come back in with his plan Correct. as he's proposing it, and it could be on the agenda for an action. Correct. Any other questions? I'm good. Do you have anything else for us? No, I, I think that Answers covers my, yeah. my needs for now. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks, <clears throat> Next in new business is a site plan review, Funeral Home Cemetery Road, map R36, lot 46. It's in the R2 zone, and the uh, applicant is Lang Bibber Funeral Home. And Lee J? Uh, yes, you do have a memo on this one. Um, this is a new application. Did you prepare? I did. And there's probably 100 million typos in it, so. Uh, Definitely um, there are. <laughs> <laughs> you won't miss that. Uh, yes, the project, um, the, the project proposal is to construct a 5,965 square foot footprint funeral home building on the parcel located across from the Evergreen Cemetery on Cemetery Road in Berwick. The 5.85 acre lot is situated in the transitional residential district, which is the R2 zone. The new building will meet the 50-foot setback um, front yard and 25-foot side yard and rear yard setbacks. The lot currently is undeveloped, wooded, and there will be 35,284 square feet of new impervious area, approximately 75,000 square feet of disturbance <coughs> Excuse me, created as a result of the development. This includes 5,965 square foot building footprint as noted earlier, 674 square foot covered drop off area, and 28,650, 645 square foot on site parking, and two new entrances for access to Cemetery Road. One of these will be located directly across the street from the northern entrance of the Evergreen Cemetery. The project requires a full site plan review per the town ordinances due to the construction of a building greater than 3,000 square feet and installment of more than 5,000 square feet of impervious surface. <coughs> the project will require both a new private well and private septic system. The septic system will be designed by civil consultants using the test pit information gathered from Ken Gardner on November 21st, 2019. The proposed septic location is yet to be determined um, per 7, Article um, 7, Section 7.17 of the Berwick Land Use Ordinance, prior to final approval, it, will be, it would help to see the proposed septic system location and the separation from the proposed well, as we just talked about, 100-foot uh, separation. Development that's, developments that create uh, one or more acres of disturbed area shall meet the stormwater management um, provisions specified in Chapter 500 of the Maine DEP regulations. Um, stormwater rules. Since there will be less than an acre of impervious area, Chapter 500 requires only the basic standards be met. The ordinance indicates and a finding be made that the applicant is considering the low impact development LID um, that the board will want to discuss this with the applicant. Current stormwater design suggests that there will be uh, 1.4 cubic foot per second increase in the stormwater coming off the site during a 100-year storm. Although there is there is no runoff requirements for specified storm levels, levels, the site has been designed to limit the stormwater discharge off site as part of this submission. An erosion sedimentation control plan and stormwater inspection um, and maintenance plan have been submitted as part of your application. Uh, under waivers, there are none requested. And the next steps would be for you to eventually find the application complete, set the date for a site walk, and set the date for the public hearing. 
Okay, Mr. Oliva. Welcome. Good evening. Uh, again, my name is Jeff Oliva. I'm here with uh, Civil Consultants, and I, with me also are the uh, Bibbers here <coughs> for the project. Um, as Lee J kind of went through the, the process, we're proposing a new funeral home off of Cemetery Road. Um, the site plan indicates the, the way we would like to have our access points coming in. One will be directly across from the uh, existing entrance to the cemetery across the street. Um, we have provisions there for parking for um, what we feel is it's a little bit more than what the ordinance requires, but we want to make sure that we have enough for if there's a larger service. Um, it's a single story building, slab on grade. We have provisions in there for uh, potentially for a caretaker's apartment. Uh, currently at other, other, other facilities, they have a caretaker that, um, that lives there that keeps an eye on the place. Um, the structure is not used every day, typically. So it's good to have somebody coming in and out and, and paying attention to that. Um, as Lee J mentioned, we uh, submitted uh, for a DEP PBR, stormwater PBR. Uh, I talked to Lucian, who is our DEP rep. Uh, he'll be sending over the signed uh, permit when he gets back from vacation next week. And um, the question about the, the comment about the, um, the stormwater and the, the increase, um, I'll kind of talk about that. I, I think it's a minor increase in our report. We talk about uh, what that does. But what I have here on this plan here is the blow up of the site plan. Um, if you go to the overall property um, plan and the drainage plans in, in the file, um, this, is, uh, this is our piece of property that we're working on right here. Our work happens up in this corner of what we have and the re remaining area of the lot is going to be undisturbed. Um, everything drains down into this lower section along this side. There's a big wetland at the bottom of the property that then just continues to discharge. You go into another wetland as you keep moving, moving down and off the page this way. Um, if we looked at uh, the stormwater report, we kind of have three different um, discharge points, and they all kind of run down this side of the property line, collect in this wetland that's on the bottom of the property. Um, so we have three discharge points. Our discharge points here and here are reduced. They eventually flow down into this side. It's our discharge point that comes off of this larger area because it's disturbed. Um, if I sum all the flows, I'm around one CFS in a 100-year storm. Um, if I look at that and what that impacts in this wetland, this large wetland, the additional flow would be very, very small. You probably wouldn't even notice it um, in the 100-year storm event. So I feel that what we've done through kind of capturing what we have on the site design and uh, the areas there that we address uh, stormwater, uh, we've provided a maintenance plan that talks about how the property owners are going to take care of that to make sure that the stormwater functions over the years. And uh, the other item that we really need to do finish up is um, we're going to go back out and do some additional test pits uh, for the septic system. Uh, when we first had the site, we went out and we uh, located the wetlands and we did a couple test pits to kind of think, see where things are. Once the design fit, finalized, uh, we knew where the well is going to be here. The plan shows the 100 foot radius. Our idea is our septic system is going to be down over on this side, way away from the wells, the well that's up here and, and handle that stuff. But we're working on that final design. Any questions for me? Okay, so tonight we're just looking to find the application complete. Um, we're not making any decision on the application this evening, just whether or not the applicant has everything that's required to make this application complete. So I'll start off with Frank. So that's just a, like an unnamed tributary that finds its way down to the confluence of Coffin Brook and Mallory and yeah, eventually Ferguson. I think Ferguson eventually once it goes through all like those headwater. areas that works its way down on the backside of Pine Hill? Yeah, okay. it's Pine Hill Brook. Old yeah. Pine Hill Brook, yeah. Pine Hill Brook, yeah. Pine Hill Brook. Yeah. I think it crosses yeah. the okay. Um, the only question I have, and uh, it's always intrigued me because of a good friend of mine, the family owned a funeral home out in New York State, and what happens to bodily fluids from the embalming where we're going to be on a septic system? Are those like a red bagged, red tagged waste that has to be captured, contained, and then disposed of off site in a manner? I, I'm going to. 
I'm going to have somebody come up and talk about that. I, the way we looked at it before, and I'm going to talk in, in, until I bring them up, is that <coughs> the, talking with the um, state, there's not a large um, amount of fluids, and it's not a huge impact to a septic system. I, I, I realize yeah. that, but I, yeah. it's for my own curiosity. Okay. I just... <laughs> Ever since I saw an embalming table that I've been curious. I'm an engineer. <laughs> Hang on to it. You might need it someday. If you could just state your name for the I'm, record. If you could just I'm state Richard your name. Biver, Biver Memorial Chapels of Kennebunk Wells and Berwick. <laughs> In Wells, we are on a tank as well. Okay. Also with a well. That project was done 25 years ago now. Our Kenny Bunk facility, which we've had for 80 years, we opened that one, <coughs> built that in 56, and that was on tanks for years with a leach bed, mm -hmm. and there wasn't any, any problem with that. Mm -hmm. uh, body fluids are going with the rest of the fluids as well. Okay. And that has worked well. Uh, Septic tanks are different, as you folks all know. They have to be pumped every so many years. And they have high BOD and concentrations. Right They're concentration treated at the treatment plants, and I'm well aware. Well, so <laughs> that has not been any problem with our other facilities. Okay. I just didn't know if you had to keep them in a containerized, like, needles. So you throw them, you needles go to a doctor's office, you see they throw needles, them in a... Needles and things like that uh, in a safe containers and disposed of. Okay. All right, thank in you. Proper manner, All right. As well as clothing and body fluids, the division clothing have to go into a special red okay. bag and they're handled okay. off site. All right, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, Frank? No, I'm good. <laughs> that was the only question. <laughs> I, I've been thinking about that one ever since question? I saw them on the app. You could have just gone over there, you know, on your off time. <laughs> <laughs> Saved us all 10 minutes. Uh, Sean? Uh, no, I don't have any questions right now. Nicole? Nothing. That seems pretty straightforward. So I just wanted to let everybody know, I, I don't know how many people are here in, in the public tonight for listening to, to this application because we know that there was, I heard through the grapevine that some people had some concerns about this, the location. So tonight all we're looking at is whether or not the application is complete. We're not going to have a public hearing. We're not going to uh, delve into anything else. We're not going to make any decision on it tonight. We have to schedule a, um, site a site walk and a public hearing as well. And we might have multiple public hearings, but the public is welcome to go to these site walks as well. So um, the next step here would be to find the application complete. Just curious, how many public here are for the, the, the funeral home? How many are here? How many here are home? are because of the funeral home being? Yeah, but they're they're with us. They're with me. The back oh, yeah, rows, yeah, okay. the back rows, the applicants. Yeah. 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 So we mentioned at a so selection meeting that we were going to have great opposition to this. Okay, so that's all. Um, so the app, the we would the motion would be to finding this application complete. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Okay. Further discussion. All in favor? Okay, so the application is found complete. Let's set a date for the site walk. Um, the 19th. The 19th, mm -hmm. and this time, since we're turning the clocks ahead, uh, we can set it to, I think if we do 5.30, that that would be plenty of time. I would yeah, think we can so. come right here. Afterwards? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so can you do uh, the 19th at, at 5.30? Yep. Does anything need to be staked out? I'll out stake. There? I'll have the building staked out, and I'll okay. have. I mean, the one entrance is known, and the other one I'll have just uh, along the road that way. Unless you want to see more than that, but I think. Do you that think the test pits will be done by then? Uh, I don't know, but we'll try our best. Okay, Jeff. Maybe to give them a little bit of scale, if you can at least set some corner stakes at the back of the parking that's on the sure. side of the building, yep. unless it's you got any alders yeah, just, or wood yep. in the area there. Yep, just we can do that. Get oriented. Yeah. Time did we say 5:30? 5:30. That work for everybody? Fine. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Next is site plan review, adult use marijuana cultivation facility, 11 Pond Road, map R70, lot 16. It's in the RCI zone, 
and the applicant is CAF Realty of Maine. I'll turn it over to the town planner. Must all be here for marijuana. <laughs> town planner didn't handle this one either. The new town planner did. Reflectman say, bring on the marijuana. <laughs> so. CAF Realty, C-A-F, um, has um, applied for a site plan and conditional use for an adult use marijuana production facility, not a retail facility, a production facility. Um, a piece, piece of the lot is in South Berwick. Um, it's the very back Thank portion you know. of the lot if you... It's the very back portion of the lot if you look at it. It's, um, there's nothing proposed for development in that location. Um, but the town line does cross over there. Um, of course, the town planner for South Berwick is my executive director. So again, we have easy conversations and he didn't have any issues or concerns uh, with this. He was notified by James as soon as the application came in. Um, so um, the, applica the applicant indicated they will complete the project in multiple phases. Phase one is a proposed to be 44 by 80 foot barn. A bioretention pond will be constructed to handle full build out um, at, at the time of construction. Phase two will include up to three 32 by 80 foot buildings uh, for a total of 11,200 square feet. A smaller bioretention pond is proposed to be built during phase two. Evergreen trees will be planted on the north and south sides of the property. A detailed odor control and security plan have been submitted. The town has not yet received a memo from fire or police. The applicant has submitted an elevation of the proposed building and an image of smaller, um, smaller building example. A new rendering has been created for the larger building, which will be shown this evening. Um, I believe they probably have it with them. Um, there were remaining questions um, sent to MGS Engineering regarding wastewater, additional information on phasing, and a few other issues, and, is and they will be prepared to answer them tonight. Planning Board discussion um, and points of discussion determine application completeness. If complete, set the application hearing, uh, application, public hearing, and site walk. Uh, that is the extent of the memo. And um, they have provided a number of pieces of information in your packet. And um, I'm assuming they have prepared information to address any other issues that um, James had requested them early on in the process. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, I'm Mike Sievert. I'm with MJS Engineering. And um, I'm here representing uh, CAF uh, Realty of Maine. And the owner's name is David Ayer. He couldn't be here this evening. Um, he's out of town. Um, and the um, operators of this uh, this production facility or growing facility is uh, they're both here with me their names are Jameson and uh, Brian and if so if there's any specific questions about the the facility itself I'm gonna have to turn it over to them but um, the the property is approximately 18 acres um, and um, it's off a of pond road. It has about 500 feet of frontage on pond road. Um, and then up in the uh, upper corner over there, there's a existing building. There's residences in there now, rentals, uh, apartment rentals in there. And um, it used to be a shop in there. Now it's just going to be a storage facility for the, for the uh, owner, David Ayer. Um, and he's just using that for his uh, electrical company. Um, the proposal is to... Uh, build that access road from the gravel parking area up at the top there down through the uh, the field there now and put the um, the buildings in this location right here I'm showing that uh, the first building the 44 by 80 building uh, in yellow there um, the idea is to build this first building see how things go and then uh, build additional buildings as, as the second or third phase as we go forward we tried to um, kind of get everything uh, set up in the design, the, the access road, the parking, uh, the utilities, and all of the drainage for the build out um, that would be built at the first phase. And, and, and then virtually the only other thing that would have to be built in subsequent phases would be the building itself. Um, the other buildings would only be 32 by 80. Uh, the reason for that is um, 
This first building has, um, has the offices and bathrooms and, and so forth in this first building, and uh, that won't be repeated in the other buildings. It would just be uh, used more for the growing and harvesting. Um, I think that's about all I have. Um, I can answer any other questions. Um, I do have, I did whoops, bring a, uh, a rendering that, that shows the size of the, the new building. So that picture that you have is an existing building that, that the owner, David, owns. It's at his property right now. Um, we put that in there as a, to just give you the style of the building and everything. And this would be what typically what the building would look like. Um, really minimal windows, of course, but uh, exit doors for emergency access only. Um, and then this would be the front um, that you'd see as you're coming down the road. That's the office area over there, and the parking uh, is right out in front of that. And then uh, these are just emergency egress doors out there. Uh, and then this would be kind of the uh, side that you would see from uh, Pond, Pond Road. So, um, would have a, a metal roof, just like the one in the picture. Um, and then I think we talked about, there was some question about, uh, I mentioned David is a, uh, a commercial electric, electrical contractor. He has every intention to um, eventually put solar panels in, in this process, but not at the very beginning, uh, just for a cost purposes so um, that's kind of a little bit maybe better explanation of the phasing I, I can go into it a little bit more if we, we need to and um, I can you know put that more in writing if I need to also. what was the date of the app the, the date that you submitted the application do you remember um, was it Tuesday it says February 5th on the yeah, it was it was we submitted it for the last meeting, but we're, we were pushed to this, uh, I, I guess the last meeting James said was pretty full, so we were pushed to this meeting. Okay. This, oh, is, yeah. this is signed March 3rd. Uh, signed March 3rd, yeah, which. Yeah. I have, I've had a copy hanging around on my desk for a while. Okay. Um, but James was gonna handle the review of it um, because of my scheduling, but it's been hanging around for a while. Okay, all right, Frank. Um, just looking at the tax map here, we're dealing, I mean, you've highlighted in yellow, I'm assuming, all the abutters yep. that, that have been noticed. Yes. Um, is that a power line right away that goes through there? It is, yeah. yes. Um, this is going to be out of sight, out of mind. I mean, it's going to be kind of remotely in the, in the back. Is, can, can you just, when you look yep. at this thing from a security point of view, People tend to travel along power lines, four-wheelers, this, that, and the other. Yeah. So if you could take yeah. special attention to that possible access from, a, from the rear where nobody can see anything, sure. um, I would yeah. like to understand what you might be trying to do there to, to safeguard okay. that. And then the only other thing is, I'm assuming we're only looking at this phase one kind of as part of this application, and because these would be substantial additions, he would be coming back into the planning board for those, whether he does it as a phase two or a phase three, four? Yeah, so I, I would suggest that you're looking at phase one, um, which includes the first building, yeah. and certainly, as they've indicated, um, the build out of the stormwater system. Right. But you could certainly, just to, to um, make sure that you've addressed it, you could condition the plan when we get to that point on each individual building coming back for approval. It doesn't mean it would be a um, highly technical review, but at least it would be put in front of you. Well, m Mr. Which Chairman. we've done before. Yes. Yeah, but in my, my concern would be is we need to learn from these facilities. Yes. They have annual licensing. and Absolutely. And we're on a curve here. Yep. And it would be nice to make sure every time something like that happens, we've at least figured out whether it was there were any problems associated with it or were there anything that were good about it that we can learn from so. i agree and we've Correct. done that with other applicants okay in the past and okay I, and i wouldn't i wouldn't uh, approve it any other way honestly mm -hmm. that's all i have john i don't really have anything right now no <clears throat> the only thing that i see uh right now initially just looking at the plans is uh there's an existing house there yes and 
there's going to there's going to need to be, and I could tell you from all these things that we have considerable screening, yeah. a lot of screening, and the other issue too is going to be lights. Mm -hmm. We've had many complaints from a lot of these facilities that have gone in. They've done a good job on on meeting the light, reg, you know, the codes sure. that we have for that. <clears throat> but you're going to have to do. You're really going to have to be aware yes. of that. Yep. Screening and lights is going to have to be big. Uh, and Mr. Chairman, I would I would suggest odor control is going to be vital. And that was going to be the next thing. Yeah, odor we we have regulated in our land. Yeah. So just make sure you have a tight odor right. control plan. Yep. Um, that will so, be. So this would be the largest one we will have had come before the board. Well, not yet. Well, <laughs> proposed. Yeah. Proposed. It says no because there's for right, for right, right now. This is this looks like it's just in line with everything else. But if there's the future expansion, right. yeah. as, as it expands, yeah. correct. Um, I mean, you're going to have to yep. spend a lot of money on screening. You got it. Yep. And we've required everybody else to do it. So. Yeah. Okay. And then you know the code enforcement officer goes out there, checks the lights at night. Um, sure. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Looking at the odor plan that they do have, it, it does seem substantial. Like it, yeah. it should be all right. Did you? Uh, and then the other thing, did you get a letter from the uh, police chief? Yeah, I haven't yet. No. Okay. We went, so we, we just ask for yep. you to draft a letter to the police chief and let him know what's going in there. Yes. He's not going to say yay or nay. He's not going to even you know just tell him what kind of system you're going to put in there for security, and it's just for his officers to be aware of what's right. back there. Okay. Yep, definitely. And this wouldn't be a gated facility. It would be. It will be. Um, so there'll be a gate here, um, so nobody will be able to get in there except the employees and date and the owner, of course. And then I do have a fence showing around here, so there will be a fence, and I can elaborate on that. Uh, but it'll be all fenced in all around. Well, my, my, again, it, it goes to that power line easement in right. the back there too, because right. I mean, if the if the cruiser. Cruiser could go in there, loop around a building yep. periodically, and come yep. out, but he won't be able to do that the way you've got it. Gained. Um, I mean, he there's could be a uh, a code that 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 he could have, and he could come down to there, turn around in that area. Definitely, I, I, I don't believe that would be a problem. Know the chiefs use codes for anything. Well, I mean, the, 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 also the fire chief is exactly. gonna, yes. the fire chief is going to need to be. Yeah. Able to He's going to have to look at this plan and say, "Can I get my my trucks around right. the backside of this building?" And it looks like. I don't, you've only got a five foot wide gravel walkway. Just on, yeah, on that one side I do, I brought, um, so that turnaround and, and that back area, that back up area in between the buildings are large enough for a fire truck and a, 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 um, a dumpster, you know, a trash truck and all that stuff. If there's additional, I'm, I'm anticipating that there may be, need to be additional access. And that's why I left the, the opening in the, in between those buildings there. So. So where so where it says five foot wide gravel driveway and where those arbor vitaes are yeah what is that, that that's a walkway to get so just well no at, up, after the walkway to the arbor vitaes what it what is that oh, is that that's, yeah that's just long yeah I don't know I mean I'm thinking the chief would want to look at these plans and say whether or not he can get around the back side on that side of the building it doesn't oh, look like yeah 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 um, I mean, we were trying to minimize the impervious area and, and that travel yeah, all the way around there, but I don't, safety so. Safety is. Yeah, it's yeah. a life safety Well, of thing, course, yeah. yeah. I mean, he, if I need to put a, a, an access around there, there's, you know, it's, it's pretty wide open out there, so we can go all the way around. Yep. Yeah, we're going to need to, yeah. I have a question. Why are you creating and constructing a 450-foot driveway and pulling power and pulling mm -hmm. everything back there rather than building your buildings where you have frontage on pond road why what's the purpose setbacks. of that setbacks the setbacks from um the school there's a school so you're tucking farms. it back behind somebody's house because you can't put it by near a school those are the rules yeah, yeah i know is that that um, thousand foot rule daycare that's opening two doors down too no. So I mean, if you look, there, there's the buff, that. there's the buffers here. Yeah, yeah. there are the buffers here. Okay. Right. I just, it just looked odd to me. Yeah. Um, yeah, nine arbor vitae aren't going to cut it. Yeah. Um, we need to know that. Mm -hmm. And I'm concerned about just the distance. I mean, you're, I ride my bicycle there a lot, so I'm very familiar with this area. 
Um, I'm very familiar with your house because I wave to you sometimes from my bicycle and I don't even know you. Um, but that's, that's like a very farmy residential area. I don't know. Mm. I mean, and I know, no, not, no, not, 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 not to not the public hearing. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, but save, but bring it to the public hearing. Um, but I mean, and I know I, you know, you can't oppose things on personal preference, but personally, I don't prefer that. <laughs> Lee J. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I just want to raise the issue since I hadn't really been involved, but Jen and I have been sitting here talking, and you've talked um, a great deal about um, um, circulation for fire equipment and whatnot. I'm going to take it a step further, and I think some research is going to need to be done by the applicant on the building code side. Um, we had a serious, um, fairly large-scale marijuana um, grow facility fire in Elliott um, mm -hmm. not too long ago and um, you're probably going to want to find out if these buildings are going to need to be sprinkled. The reason I raise that is because there's a well here and so there may need to be um, con containment or, or con tanks, underground tanks with 10,000, 20,000 like gallons of storage, system. that's right, on site um, in case there's ever a burn. Um, so, uh, and, and we, handle, we handle the town of Elliott as well, so. Is, is the site a wet site out in the back? It, um, the, the soils are, you know, up in this area right here where we're putting this pond, they're elevated by a couple feet so that it's not wet up in that area, but the water table on a couple of the test pits we did um, off of that mound and down here is about 18 inches to 20 inches. To go along with what you were saying, Lee J, you know, what about considering a, a dry hydrant in a fire pond situation, and then they could hook the pumper to that, and then they hook to a water gong kind of a system on the side of the building to run sprinklers? Because I mean, I don't think you want a, that whole thing to go up in smoke. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, whatever whatever they would need to propose, if in fact the building code is going to require. So you're, he's hearing some things here tonight. He can go back and, Absolutely. and look at some of this stuff. Okay. Absolutely. All right, so what we're looking at tonight is whether or not the application is complete. Um, and we've got, uh, I know you've got some work to do to look into as well. So we're just solely looking at whether or not the application is complete. Um, does he need the, the statement from the fire chief and police chief for the application to be complete? I know we've asked that to be included with this foundation of materials. We've asked that and we should probably put that on there, but it's not in the okay. current application. I know but we've, we've always I think asked we ask it that. every single time. We do, we do, and I think that's why it gets missed a lot. So okay. it's not it's nothing that you did. Yeah, yeah, just, no, I just want to make sure. We'll put, no, you know, another <laughs> box in there. I have reached know. out to them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are the we process. looking two meetings out for a site walk and that kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, whether or not we would give them plenty of time. Whether or not we vote on the application being complete, yeah. I know you're not taking public comments. I can't. I can't take comments right. I can't take. I can't take comments right now, ma'am. I'm sorry. You can. You can. Okay. Okay. And we will bring all that stuff up in, in probably four weeks from now. Okay. Um, we're just looking at application complete completeness. So, do we have a motion? I move that we find this application complete. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Seconded. Do we have any further discussion? All in favor, finding the application complete. Okay. Five zero. Let's take a look here at the, yes. I'm, I'm just going to, for the public's edification, finding the application complete means only that they have submitted the information that's required of them to be submitted. It doesn't mean that it's it's great application and it's you know, ready to go, but they've submitted the information for the board to be able to start acting on the application that's all like the a job application issues. now you now they can be interviewed yes and so what happens is you're going to get another notice that there's going to be a public hearing once we schedule that <laughs> or a site walk. site walk and then you could come to the public hearing you can get all those concerns out we'll take the questions down come to the site we'll, walk come to the site walk ask those questions and bring all those things up if you have some concerns about this i would just ask you to email james in the planning office you could come in and see him. You can also come in and see Jen. I know you were mentioning something about South Berwick. Um, you know, bring all these things up ahead of time, but um, but for tonight, we were just looking at do, that. Do so we, so do we I notice South Berwick for that hearing, for that public hearing? 
Are we, sure. Are they, yes. Are they in yes. a butter? Yeah. Yes. They're in a butter. Because we did that for North Berwick, correct? On the other one? On that the is other correct. End. And okay. we're definitely, and I'll work on it on Tuesday when I'm back in the office, we're definitely going to have to know if they are indeed opening a daycare two doors down. Yeah. That is something that I will um, call Joe Roussel about um, and find the answer before we go for, forward. Because okay. we we have to know. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Right, that, that daycare is in South Berwick, as we right. understand it. So They would then, get a notice anyway. And then, Right, but then the question becomes, what is you know, their how does ordinance? This, yeah, how does their ordinance or how does the state law apply in this case because it's cross-border? Yep. How are you sending the notices? With they you? come in via mail. They, yeah, you wouldn't get one for this. You'll get one when we have the public hearing. We haven't set the public hearing. It'll be a public hearing. Yes. 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 Be a registered um, mail. So do yeah. you do you want to set the public <laughs> hearing, or do you want to wait until we get the answers that we may need? We can always cancel if we have to. Yeah, we can always so cancel. So that's okay. I'd rather set it and have it yeah, set in place. It's going to be right because we're a month. Yeah. We're looking a month out. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And we're, so we're, we're looking at get ten more marijuana applications in that time. Yes, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're looking yep. at April second at six thirty for a, a public hearing. Site walk too. Should we wait? Yeah. Yeah. Do the site walk the same night. And then would you be able to do a five thirty <laughs> site walk on April second? Yep. At the site, and please come to the site walk as well. You know, are there any features out there? We, if you heard from the funeral home, we were asking him to put some stakes out there sure. for, so we can get kind of situated. Yep. Okay. Yep, I can stake the yeah. center line of the road and the Two, building. Okay. Yep. Yes. Any other, anything else from the board? All right. I, I didn't mean to cut you off, but we just got to follow things. Otherwise, meetings get out of hand and everybody starts yelling and. We can save the yelling for, uh, you Four know. Four weeks, <laughs> yell away, you can yell all night if you all want right. to. So please, please show up, please show up to the site walk and please show up to the public hearing. And sir, we're all set. Yeah, all right, all great. Right, thank you. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you now. I see there are public comments. Can we just comment about this? Yeah. Sure, bring it up. Okay. <laughs> All right, so here's the thing. Do not shout from the audience because we have microphones because we have viewers at home, so you'll have to come up to the podium. Next on the agenda is public comment session. It's open to any resident or property owner in the town of Berwick to talk about anything that relates to the planning board. So public comment session is open. Please feel free to come forward. And just state your name and address for our viewers at home or a highly rated program on Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs> They watch. I'm telling you, they watch. You'll read about it on so Facebook. I don't have anything prepared. Can you just say your name? Heidi Levier, 11 Perry's Way. Um, I don't, and actually, I'm also a co-owner of Pond Road, um, 13 Pond Road. Um, I don't have anything prepared, um, and uh, I just have uh, been um, out of the loop, so to speak. My husband was very sick. Uh, fighting cancer for two years. He passed away December 29th. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, it was in the midst of that December that uh, naive me with my four children that live very close to the kind farms that now will um, um, be 20 steps or so from the border of this property. Um, I uh, thought, how am I going to get my Christmas tree this year? I thought, Oh, there's a new farm stand opening right there on 236. Kind Farms sounds wonderful, nice and kind. <laughs> and uh, I thought, oh, I could just drag it across because usually my husband does that. And I'm in bed and I'm Googling and I'm like, wait, what? They're not selling the trees I'm looking for. Um, <laughs> so I just was just caught by surprise and I didn't even know what this, where the... What's the name of the one on the corner by uh, Salmon Falls? Oh, Tri Camp. Yeah, I'm like, I, I just, again, naive. I'm like, whoa, they do out there. So <coughs> it's like, I can't look any direction from my property without it being with this impacted. And I, I don't, whatever, do whatever you want on your own. But I don't want it. It's tough. Like, you don't want it in your backyard with them, and you don't want it in your front yard with them, and you don't want it to the right with them. Where, where's Burrett going? Right, I so mean, just we so have just no, just, just barely any concerns. businesses, and this is what we're doing? Oh, like, Well, and I'm glad you bring this up because yes. we get this question a lot. And so that, so Kind Farms <laughs> has been in the mix for about three or four years. If you're, if you're in a butter within 200 feet, and I know it doesn't sound like very much, 
it, it, does, it sounds like a lot, but on Route 236 uh, or Route 4, it's yeah. really not a lot. Yeah. Um, so abutters were notified of that. The planning board in our land use ordinance changes, we recommended to the selectmen that we cap the number of any marijuana places here in town at what it is right now, come the end of June, which is when the town's going to be voting. They agreed with us. We have to cap it right now because there's, we're hearing from a lot of people like you that there's a lot of these businesses going in and we need to take a little time out and see how everything affects us. So we have proposed to cap it at what it is right now and then the town will vote on this in June. Okay. And the, the select board didn't really want to cap it, but we really encouraged them to because they really like the business. Oh, yeah. So I, maybe go to a selectman's meeting, too. They meet on Tuesdays. <laughs> they were receptive, though, to review those yes. capping numbers they annually, annually yes. because some people will have staying power. The business will stay. Some people will drop off. Mm -hmm. Okay, they won't, you know. Be a livelihood for them, but it kind of ran away. It kind of ran, ran away from the town. I mean, three years ago, four years ago, we had a, uh, a, moratorium. a, a moratorium, and then that moratorium expired, and then this boom just happened. And we said we need to get something in place, otherwise we're going to be like the mecca for Southern Maine of marijuana. And that's yeah, well, why we proposed yeah. that, and they agreed to that. They voted on it, so that's going to be going to the townwide ballot referendum in June. Yeah, I mean, just on our little street, I have a neighbor here, too. There's just three little homes down there, and it's a dead end. And just the traffic, just since they've opened, just coming down our our street, just being nosy. I mean, I have a security system by ADT being installed tomorrow. I've had, like, very strange activity. Burke police are aware. They patrol my street every night now. So is, I mean, I know you mentioned the Berwick PD, but that our little corner, uh, that South Berwick line there is being hit hard and, and is the Berwick police resource to be able to give us the security that we need in that area. I mean, especially when we go recreation, I mean, we're only seeing this just from medical. Mm -hmm. So when we go recreation, I expect traffic will even pick up more. And I, you know, I'm not really biased to the use. It's just, I worry about once we go recreation, what else the folks are using, driving in where <coughs> by my child's bus stop, you know, it's like, and it's not, you know, it'll, it's not, it's during those hours too. We've definitely seen traffic pick up over there. I mean, See, it's not crazy, but it, it, but we would have nobody drive down those, our street. I mean, it's three homes. It's a dead end. Perry's way. But if you go down Circuit Road, yeah. there's like a three mil. Oh yeah, oh yeah. The three newer homes. There's I love a, those homes in there. Yeah, yeah. There's a bit. One of them South Berwick. The last yes. house is South Berwick. Yeah. But my property, <laughs> both my properties, it's the this a diagonal South Berwick yeah. Berwick town yeah. line. But I my they're on that town line. Yep. Okay. I know where that is. Yeah, and it, we never see anybody. No, we know every license plate coming down that street. There's no reason to go down there except for mm. Dan in South Berwick, Paul or myself. And I mean, we've got cars now going in and turning around and just poking around because I, I I think they didn't know we were behind back there before but now it's increased traffic so they're like oh Does pond road push all the way through to another road over <laughs> in South Berwick or is it a dead end no it goes all the way up pond past Spring through. Hill yeah. to Agamenicus ties yeah. all the way back through okay yeah. the Knights Pond Road right but my little pond road my my yeah. the, that residence it's just a so the circuit road, kind of, by Dunn's Farm, mm -hmm. yep. there's circuit road, and then there's a teeny tiny, most people don't even know it's there, teeny, teeny, tiny road that just has two Burrick homes there. And um, like I said, we were kind of hidden, and because people just fly by on Route 4, but now it's like people slop, have, are stopping because there's a business. And Well, the planning board has expressed some concern about the traffic and the safety on that whole Route 4 corridor, and I think... Yeah. The town has, the town fathers have indicated that the DOT has indicated we want to do something out there, it's on our nickel, but I think we still need to have that discussion you want to have with them, Dave. Yeah, and, I think so, yeah. And uh, find out where we can get a little bit Hear of horse from the power. horse's mouth, yeah. Yeah, I just am so concerned that Berwick PD may not be, with so many of these types of businesses coming up, may not be well equipped to patrol at all I mean you know it's it's a mm -hmm. once people know it's back in there it's a risk that I worry about but and we can actually ask to have a representative from the PD at the public hearing 
since we have a, some extended concern about and, that. I mean, and maybe it, the fire, someone from the fire department yeah. too, because of access in there. equipment. Sorry. Well, we got. We can't talk about that. Well, these are, yeah, these, we can't talk about that application. But these we are talk about that these, specific. These are conditional uses, and if you were here earlier, we had an abutter came in, made some comments, and the board addressed that and took that into consideration. So, at the public hearing, any comments you have will be taken into consideration as part of the conditional yeah, use absolutely. process. Anybody else for public comment session? This gentleman here wanted to talk about a well at one point. <laughs> <laughs> if it's about an application that we talked about tonight, we can't talk about it. So, but he said he had very I'm just capping off. Paul Amatucci, I'm on 12 Perry's Way. I live across from the Leviers. Uh, and I, I, you've heard from me before on this issue when we were talking about this a few months or so ago. In any case, my issue is that. Here we've got this thing, and yes, there are going to be public comments and all that, and I get it. Uh, but we are taking one of the nicest, quietest, most beautiful, peaceful areas in Berwick, South Berwick, and we are now turning it into a commercial marijuana area. Hallelujah. Isn't that great? So... Aside from all the other issues, the fire, the police, the traffic, the, you know, all that thing, the safety of our children, all those kinds of things. Nicole, how about property values? Oh, yeah. When people s can stand on my front porch and look at the facility. Mm -hmm. Where is my property value going? It's going right down. Yeah. So these are issues that you know, maybe transcend the planning board. I mean, you get an application, you got to do what's in front of you. and, and But I think we really need to be very careful, really careful. So I think these are selectmen concerns, honestly, yeah. because, you know, we, when we get an application, we have a we have a guideline that we can go, like, I can't say, I hate this application. No, reject it. That's not what I can't. Um, but the selectmen are the ones that really are governing our town and and i said to them at their last meeting we have a lot of public that don't want this that, that's why we need to cap it we the public do not want this anymore um and they're they um they only take so much from just us we hear it from the public because we see the applications and then we tell them but going to them and talking they've got public comment sessions um I think would go over or at least make some kind of an impact because they're really what's regulating what we can do. But ultimately, they're the ones that move it on to the governing body, yes. which is the town meeting yes. format yeah. mm -hmm. for an ordinance. Mm -hmm. And we have land use ordinance amendments all the time. That so we make, the, we make the recommendations to change the land use ordinance. They approve those and they put them on the ballot. So right. That's, right. So you have to go to them too because otherwise they think it's just us with you know, they think coming we're, up. we're fatigued. We're sick of dealing with I marijuana. Really That's what they think. <laughs> just the, just the history of that corridor, the, the town had no ordinances at all back in the early 80s. And we finally put a land use ordinance in after voting it in, voting it out, voting it in, voting it out, voting it in. Okay, that's how it went. And it was around 86, I believe, was the window of time when that went in. But that whole Route 4 corridor from day one on, our, on that original map has always been commercial industrial, rural commercial yeah. industrial. Mm -hmm. It's always been that. So that's the history of that Route 4 strip back right. when we put the ordinance in. Anything else, sir? That'll do it for now. All right, thank <laughs> you. Thanks. See you next Anybody month. Anybody else for public comment? Yeah. Yeah. A couple of questions. Sure, just state your name and address, I'm Chris please. Chris Macias, 386 Portland Street. Uh, number one. There's a couple of wells that are at least 100 feet from where they're going to build the buildings, okay? That affects the people living there, and I'm one of them, okay? I own nine and a half, almost 10 acres of land abutting it, okay? Wh which Number which two, property are you talking about? Uh, what? Which property are you talking about? My property. I'm right across from my showing. Okay. Okay. Anyway, number two. The pond down there. There's a stream that goes right behind us that goes right into the pond. Number three, the waste. When they, when they take the marijuana out, what they, when they throw the rest of it out, a lot of it's going to end up on the ground. It's going to affect that you got that other place going at uh, soybeans out across the street that water washes over. It's, they're probably selling as natural food, too. And also, 
the, the chemicals that they use. They're going to use miracle Grow anything they can use. If they can grow 24 hours, they're going to grow 100 plants in 24 <laughs> hours because they're in, into it strictly for the money, nothing else, or else they wouldn't be doing it, okay? And then the property values is a, another thing. It's going to affect everybody in the area, you know? And, and the thing is, people, people move to this area. I, moved, I, I lived on 12 and a half acres of land when I lived in Mass. I've been up here 16 years. Okay, first thing I did, I went around to my neighbors, I introduced myself, I told them up here to live, not change things, and I never did change things. You know, because I grew up in a country, and the town I came from originally had 600 people there. So it was a small town. But the thing is, I see up here, everything's going. I, I understand that, that's going to happen. But the thing is, you know, people, they, they come up here to live, and they... they and they let everything change. I mean, it's one thing if you've got business that, that helps the town, helps the tax rate. I mean, our taxes are going sky high. I'm retired now. I still have to work just to make ends meet. You know, I mean, next thing I know, I'll be a cigar store Indian down a three kid trading post, selling cigars or something, you know, trying to make ends meet the way things are going. But the thing is, people have a future here. And the, the thing, you don't find out till after you're sick that the land is polluted or they dump the wrong stuff in here. Nobody knows what they're going to dump in there. Well, make, sure you, make sure you come to make sure you come to the public, make sure you come to the site walk in the public hearing. And that's the thing. I mean, it's bad enough we got enough people running around potheads now. I mean, this <laughs> basically I've half of me, I've, I've met many of them in my life, believe me, and a lot of them that I've met, okay, ended up on drugs after because that wasn't giving them a high enough. <laughs> and, that's right. a, and if it's and if it affects your kids, just like it does the kids here or anybody, it'd be a different story. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank so, you, sir. And I think they're important questions, and they should be looked at. No, and we're, we yeah. wrote, we've got them, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else for public a comment session? Seeing nobody else come forward, close the public comment session. Anything from staff? All right, next on the agenda is the adjournment. Actually, I actually if I may, very yeah. quickly, um, if the board hasn't, probably hasn't, gotten to you yet. I'm not sure how many of you are involved in transportation issues. Tom Reinauer, who um, has been the, the CACS um, director um, and the transportation director for SMPDC for 27 years, um, is leaving. Um, he's done in two more weeks, um, and we have hired a replacement for Tom. He's actually going to the DOT as the um, Deputy Director of um, Planning for the state, um, and um, we have um, hired uh, a lady by the name of Stephanie Carver, who is currently my um, co cohort um, at Greater Portland Council of Governments, and so she's going to be joining us in a couple of weeks, and she will be taking over all of the transportation responsibilities for um, Southern Maine Planning. Okay. Frank? Um, did everybody get one of these? Yes. Um, I tried to figure this out. This is a solar kind of farm or, or the thing you're talking about? Yes. It doesn't seem to line up with the, I mean, the lot that they, the address that they identify, 193, Route 236. It's the lot that he bought up there. That but it's a, it says it as a 3.1 acre site in a wooded area, and this is, this is 12 acres. Something just didn't seem to line up. That site is actually 25 point something acres. It's not three. So looking at the five. tax map, there's some... You're going to see that come across the planning board. That's on the next agenda. Okay. Um, it's just that the solar array or the solar farm is going to be over 13 acres proposed, not over the full 25. Okay. So that might be a typo. But that's not a tree farm area because on the tax map it shows... It's not. It's not in a current it's, use. So it's almost clear-cut right now, so yeah, it's not okay. true. Farm. So I have a copy of the application that was handed to me today. I have not looked at it yet. So some of it is, just to let you know. Well, this is getting better, oh, David. The, we want to put it on the school right? property. <laughs> this is just a little bit for Let's deal with that. All right. Yes. Anybody else? <laughs> Next on the agenda is the adjournment. <laughs> I move we adjourn the... Uh, is this don't, don't run right now. I'm going to say something. Okay, we have, a motion. we have a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. Seconded. Okay, all in favor? All right. Wait.